Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at two cart flows features that are a bit tied together, and that is enabling your buyers to change the quantity of the items that they wanna purchase on the checkout page, along with selecting a variation if you have variable products. She so might be asking herself, what is a variable product? And it's essentially the best way to look at it is a shop that is selling a t-shirt. That t-shirt you might want to sell in different colors and in different sizes. And so those are variations. So if you sell it in black and white, there is a variation there called color and you have those two variations. But then when you mix in sizes, which would be the other variation, small, medium, large, when you do the math, you end up having six different variations for this particular shirt. And I'm pleased to let you know that CardFlow supports variable products, and we're gonna cover how to use that in this video. So let's look at everything you're going to learn in this video. First thing we're gonna do, and it might be a little backwards, is we're first gonna look at the options that CartFlows gives you and where to point and click to enable those options. I'm doing it this way for people that already know how to set up a variable product so they can get the instruction that they want quicker. Then we're gonna take a look at actually how to create a variable product inside of WooCommerce. It's actually quite easy. Then we're going to configure a sales funnel and then we're going to test the various options that CartFlows gives you to make those options available to the buyers on your checkout page. So let's take a look at those options. So when you are in your checkout step in CartFlows, the tab that you would choose the product, what happens when you have a variation, you would start typing the name of the product as you can see in this screenshot. And we see the name of the core product, which is DNK white shoes with LED. And then underneath it, you see each of those variations. So in that example I gave you a moment ago with the six variations, you would see the name, however you've named the core shirt, and then you would see a list for each of the variations. If you want your buyers to be able to choose a variation, you'll wanna choose a core product and not one of the variations as you can see there with the second and third product that says hyphen purple, hyphen red, those are two different variations. Now once you've gone ahead and selected the core product, you're going to see the option, and you can see the, they're numbered here. I'll start explaining these options one by one. So where you see number one, you'll wanna check that box. It will not be checked by default, and once you check it, it will reveal all of these additional options. So number two is where you can name the section where your buyer will be able to choose their quantity and variations, and you'll see that on the front end in a moment. Option number three is you controlling how your buyer can order what you have added to the checkout page. So you can restrict them that they have to purchase every product there because when you're enabling quantities, they can say a quantity zero. But if you wanted to force them to purchase everything on the checkout, that's where you would select. The second option is to let users select one product from all of the options. So this will just be a simple radio box where they can't choose multiple products. The last option here is to let users select multiple products from all of the options that are available. So in this option, it would be shown as check boxes where the buyer can check on multiple variations. Then number four, as you see here, enable variations. This will be unchecked by default. Once you check on it, it will reveal the options for five, which is, do you want to show these variations in a list or do you want to show them in a pop-up? So there'll be a link when your bar clicks on it, it says select variation, and then they can choose the variation they want. So you're gonna wanna choose show variation inline when there's very few variations of the product. If there are say 10 different variations, it's gonna be quite a long list. So in that option, you would probably wanna choose show variations in a pop-up so your buyer can just click on the link, pop up, choose the product, and then they can move forward. And item number six in this screenshot 
enable quantity, that will be unchecked by default. When you check that, there will be an option on the checkout page for your buyer to be able to change the quantities. So if you just wanted to enable quantities and not variations because you're not using variations, you would check the box at number one, then you'd check the box at number six, and you're set. Then maybe where number two is, you could say, choose the quantity you want to order or something along those lines, or just leave it the way that it is. So now let's go ahead and jump on into the website and start testing these options, but we're first going to create a variation. So I'm gonna to go to products, add new, and go ahead and give this product a name. Okay, I've named it really cool shirt. Very unique there, right? And so where it says product data, I'm gonna go ahead and choose variable products. And I'm gonna just go ahead and click on publish to get this product published. So now we need to go to attributes and we have two options. We can choose to create a custom attribute or we can choose these ones that are already here, color and size. So since it's a shirt, color and size is pretty much gonna cover most variations that you may want to create. So I'll go ahead and choose color. Then I'm gonna click on add and it's going to add color here. So there's values that I need to select. So when I click here, it's gonna show all the values that are already on my site. Or I can go right here and add a new value to it. So I'm gonna choose a couple, I'm gonna choose black and I'm gonna choose blue and we'll keep it like that. And we also need to check this box that says used for variations. Go ahead and check that. And I'm gonna go ahead and try the size as well. So I'll choose size, click on add, and it adds it here. Same thing, we have different sizes here. I'm gonna do medium and I'm gonna do large, and I'm also gonna use this for the variations. So we have two in the color category and two in the size category. I'll click on save, and now those are saved. Then I'm gonna click on variations, and right here I'm gonna choose this option that says create variations from all of the attributes. So after this, I'm gonna end up with four different variations. So I'm gonna choose that, click on go. This is a confirmation, I'll click on okay. It's gonna give me another confirmation that says four variations have been added. And I'll click on okay. So here we have it. I have my colors, black and blue, and each one of them I have sizes for. Now if I didn't say, for example, have the medium in blue, I can go here and choose remove to remove this variation. Now on each variation, I can have unique values for them. So I can click on a little arrow here. Each variation can have its own picture. Well, any of these values can be unique on a per variation basis. But at the very least, before we move forward, we need to have a price right here for each variation. So I've gone ahead and added 19.99, and then I'm going to collapse this, and I'm gonna do this for each of the shirts. I'm gonna put in that same price. Now, there's different SKU numbers you can have, there's different shipping costs you can have per variation. It's very flexible on everything that you get to control. You know what, for this one, I'm gonna put $29.99 just so we can see the difference when it go, comes time to start using this. So I'm gonna click on Save Changes, and now I'm gonna scroll up here and update the product. Now, ideally, you would've wanna put a different image for each of those different colors. So you'd have the shirt in black, the shirt in blue. You'd want different images for those. I didn't do that in this step. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add a new flow. Okay, I've gone ahead and added this new flow, and I've named it Cartflow's T-shirt. I'm gonna go into my checkout page. I'll click on Edit, because this is where our options are gonna be. And the first thing is I'm gonna click on select product and I'm gonna to go to the drop down, and I'm gonna choose that product. So here is the parent product, really cool shirt. And then you can see the four variations of it down here. Now, if we want to make it available for our customer to choose the variation, we're gonna choose the parent one. However, if you wanted no selection option and you're just including a specific one, you could choose that, but that's not what we're doing in this tutorial. I'll click on the parent product there. And then I'm gonna check this box right here to enable these product options. So these are our default options right here. I'm gonna go ahead and 
enable quantity and then we'll take a, a look to see what that looks like and then we're going to start playing around with some of the variation options so i'm going to click on update and then we're going to take a look at this page right now here it is and you can see really cool shirt by default it chose the first one in that list and then right here i have my quantity selector so you can see as I increase it, the price dynamically changes instantaneously. Okay, so let's go back and now let's play around with some of the variation options. So I'm gonna choose this box and first I'll show variations in line, which is fine because there's actually just four in this example. If there was more than that, we probably would wanna do it in a pop-up. So I'm gonna go to the front end and do a quick refresh. And so now we, you can see right here, we have each of our variations and we have it set so the buyer can only choose one. So we get these radio box options right here and here's the quantity, so it works the same. And here's that product, remember the variation, we made it a different price uh, just to show you that there. Okay, let's go back and look at mo some more of these options. So we had the option to restrict the user to purchase all products. And right here is the option to let the user select multiple products from all options. So when I choose that and click on update, we're gonna see these radio box options are gonna ch change to check boxes. So now your buyer can say, you know what? I want a blue and medium and I'm gonna get a black and medium, and I don't want that black and large, and there it is, $29.99 for the, the one shirt, and the blue variation, and the black variation is $19.99, and we have our total right there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to show the variations in a pop-up. So I'm gonna choose that option, click on update, and again, refresh on the front page. Okay, so now it says really cool shirt, choose a variation. And when I check this box, it would show a picture if I would have added a picture. Your buyer can choose the color that they want. Let's actually choose the blue one. And the size, let's choose a large, because I think, ooh, was it the medium that was $19, $29? There we go and then they can just choose that to select it and now they're using this one they're they have ordered the blue in medium and they can still change the quantity of that shirt that they want right there and so that is using product variations and enabling the ability to change the quantity on the checkout. This works so well in so many situations and I know your buyers are just going to love it. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.